Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and today we're going to be tackling some of the organizational issues that we face as wargamers. As we've mentioned before on the channel, the Encounter Wargaming family is growing. Adam's just had his second little girl, which is awesome, and I've actually got my first on the way, a little boy. I've been forced to turn my studio space into another bedroom because we have another person joining our family very soon. So, uh, I've been forced to tackle some of the great organizational issues that we usually face as wargamers. Um, obviously, you don't have to be moving all of your stuff into a storage space to be able to benefit from these organizational tips that I'm going to be giving you. But uh, these are things that, you know, a lot of people might be able to use. There are things that, at least here in Canada, we can access very easily um, and cheaply, and it makes a massive difference in organizing our stuff. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So personally, I've found that when you're trying to tackle an organizational problem, at least, like I say here in Canada, in Toronto, uh, we have something called Dollarama. And in the United States, you have Dollar Tree. Uh, I'm not sure what your equivalent is in the UK, but basically, at Dollarama, I've discovered these beautiful little babies right here. So these plastic drawers are absolutely great for organizing bits, for organizing train supplies, Hell, even for miniatures, because if you believe it or not, this drawer is actually pretty much the height of an Imperial Guardsman or an old school Space Marine. Now, with the advent of Primaris, they don't really fit in here anymore, but your old school models, at least, will fit standing up in these drawers, which is excellent. But the more important thing is, the thing that makes these more versatile, is just the fact that they come apart. Which is actually kind of annoying in a way <laughs> when you're trying to pick up a whole stack of them. But at the same time, it allows you to customize them. And allows you to take more than one and stack them on top of each other, making them all one unit. So basically, all you're doing is taking this, you're going to take the top off, if you get another one of these, and just keep stacking them up. Up, 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 up. And like I say, they just separate here at the corners. Super easy. And snap back together. If you can see closer on the camera here, they have these little like snap situation going on here that basically just pressure fits inside the one above it, which is excellent. Um, and more or less, I went to the dollar store and I got myself a crap ton of these and I've been using them to organize my bits, so let's check that out. Right, so, there it is, the wall of bits. So basically, all I've done is take all of these sections, like I say, they just stack on top of each other super easily. And then you can just literally just throw some uh, address labels. Just went to the dollar store again, bought a dollarama, got a, bu got a bunch of address labels, slapped them on the front there. Super easy, great for organization. Good news is, when you're working with these in the future, so say I want you know to convert some Imperial Guardsmen, I've got a bit of parts here, these drawers actually come right back out, no problem. Boom. So I can take it out, play around with that bits box, slide her back in when I'm done, no mess, no muss, no fuss. Great solution. Um, everyone should probably have one of these on their workbench. Uh, my bits, but some people's bits box are only a small container. I, however, have been doing this for like 25 years and uh, I've gathered a lot of bits over time. So this wall of bits is perfect. And the great news is I can always expand it by buying more of these units. I can build it higher, I can build it wider. If I really wanted to, um, because like I say, they do come apart, so you can very easily just like rip them apart again. So if you do have to move this from spot to spot, like the entire stack from spot to spot, uh, a great idea I had, which does actually work, is just to wrap packing tape around the sides of it, so you're not interfering with the in and out of the front. If you just go along the top, down the side, up and back up again, it is actually strong enough to hold all of them together. Um, and so the only thing you really have to watch for, actually, is just that these these drawers um, they do move up and down and they are open at the top right and even though there's another one above it there's that little like half inch of space inside if you see if I take this guy out there's like an opening to the next drawer so there is that little half inch of space sort of between this plastic drawer and this plastic drawer where bits can fly around and even might even fly out through these cracks so be mindful of that don't knock these over once you filled them up but uh, 
yeah, like I say, if you wrap it with packing tape, you'll actually, they'll never come apart. You'll still be able to pull these drawers in and out, no problem. And it just makes for great working. Um, yeah, so that's my solution. For those of you who are just drowning in bits, this is, I don't know what it was, a buck twenty-five for one of these four, maybe it was two dollars for one of these, for four of these drawers, so one of these sections of four drawers. So this entire thing, let's see, what would it have cost me? Four, eight, so two, um, 16, 20 bucks. Literally 20 bucks for this whole wall right here. Boom, donezo. The next inexpensive, and, well, actually pretty much free storage solution that I wanna uh, basically give to you guys is these beautiful things right here. This, for those of you who don't live in Ontario or in Canada, is called a knockdown. It is basically a cardboard box. But even better, it's able to collapse flat, flat pack, fold it back up, good to go. Now, these are available at the beer store for free. Basically, this is what they intend you to bring back your empties in. This is exactly the size of a 12 case. Pretty sweet, right? Uh, is it 12 case? Yeah, it's 12 case. Not a 2 4, it's 12 case, right? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, they give you these for free because they expect you to take them home, fill it up with empties, and bring it back. However, I have discovered that these fit perfectly on my bookshelf. I can fit three rows of them, or three columns, I should say. Two rows of three columns on each shelf, which is great for storage on bookcase. Now, it does stick out a little bit, like the bookcase actually comes to like there, but that's actually great for access. And then I just simply write on the front what I've got. Now, because they are collapsible, um, you want to make sure that if you're putting heavy minis in them, that you reinforce this. And what I've done is I've reinforced them with pack. And that's just simply pushing the corners together so they're nice and tight, putting some packing tape around the corners, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then taking it, and I, I literally just like wrapped it around a bunch of times with packing tape, keeping everything as tight and as square as possible, and then even reinforce the handle going this way with the packing tape throughout it. And more or less, what you get at the end of it is this. It looks kind of crappy, but because of the beautiful height of it, so this, I got this foam, this is exactly the same as the carrying case foam that you get in the GW carrying cases. I actually got a roll of this at one of my past jobs when I was working in a wood shop. We got this crate and it was lined with this stuff, which was awesome. That was just a great find. I don't expect you to be able to find three inch thick case foam, but more or less because I had this, I was able to cut pieces of the size of the box and now I've got a beautiful lid which keeps my miniatures all packed, but more or less this is a great way of storing those miniatures that you can't really put in your carrying cases because they're all pointy or they're weirdly shaped. So in this one particularly, I have my Mahler Fiends, my Contemptor Conversions, um, my Lord Discordant, uh, Hellright on Dark Abeyant, all these things with these weird tentacly stuff that uh, can't really fit, like I say, in a case properly. Plus, it's super easy to actually, I brought these to the Hogtowner with me last year, or at least one of them, um, and it was actually super easy to transport my models that way. And because of this nice layer of foam that I have just cut perfectly to size, it just slides right in, all their little pokey spikes and tentacles all stick right into it which is great and it doesn't break anything off and that also means you hear that almost no movement at all and then all i've done is i've written on here you know these are my demon engines and uh boom goes on the shelf store it away no problem and like i say i grabbed last night me and the wife we went and grabbed five of these from the beer store i grabbed three and she grabbed two they must have thought we had a massive party or something but <laughs> Basically, uh, yeah, that's a great storage idea. It's virtually free. All you need is some packing tape. If you want to do this foam situation, you can. Otherwise, um, they do actually stack here. I'll give you two that aren't taped. There's these guys here. They do actually stack quite well on top of each other without falling into each other. You can see there, because they are like the perfect shape, they do kind of stack on top of each other without falling into each other. So you will be able to stack miniatures 
that are that high. And just to give you a framework, let's see if I can grab myself. There we go. There's my old Lord of Change, which will probably end up being a Zinch Demon Prince in the future because, you know, Lord of Change is way bigger now. He is not nearly as tall as the actual box. So there you go. You can have a Demon Prince size miniature hanging out in there and put another one on top and it will not squish your miniature. Like, did that just blow your mind? Because it totally blew mine when I first realized that I could do this and they were free of charge. So anyway, that's that guys, on to the next one. Another thing I would suggest keeping your eyes peeled for are cylindrical containers, if you know what I mean by that. So like, for example, Pringles cans. Or like, I got a whole bunch of these because I was on them for a while, I was taking fruit salad to my lunch. As you can see here, this is actually a container for some fruit salad. Yum. Uh, anyway, so this kind of thing, it's got a nice screw-off lid. This would be great for bits, too. But in this case, uh, this is just something that is just essential for desk organization, especially things like dowels, brushes, that kind of stuff. Um, any kind of container that is cylindrical like this has a wide base that once you, you know, put a bunch of brushes or dowels or something in this, it's not going to just fall over. Like, obviously, you can, you know, use anything, old soup cans or whatever. But sometimes if you stack it too high, if you have things that are too tall in there, like, like dowels, for example, they'll just fall over. That's where the Pringles cans come in handy. These things are great. Just absolutely amazing for storing things like that. Like I said, dowels, florist wire, um, any other thing that's super tall like that, that just takes up a lot of space. When you store it uh, vertically as opposed to horizontally, you save so much space. And it allows not, not only that, but easy access to it. As well, um, it takes up, like I say, a lot less desk space. So, And that's exactly what I'm talking about. So here you go with the Pringle can. Boom. Dowels. This little weird cylindrical thing uh, I'm using for my sponge brushes. And there's like things like this, where this actually came with like, you know, a small helping of caramel corn or something in it. You know what I mean? Just when you, when you see stuff like that and you're in need of stuff like this for this purpose, make sure to hold on to it because this is the kind of plastic that's not going to deteriorate, it's not going to bend, it's not going to break. The Pringle cans are a nice thick cardboard, so as long as you're not storing anything wet, like brushes in them, they should be okay, they won't deteriorate. There you go, there's the fruit salad container for all my sacrificial brushes, my cheap dollar store type brushes. And then over here, same thing, Pringles can, nice tall stuff. I got some plastic card eye beams, some unopened dowels, some florist wire. Um, yeah, that's basically it, guys. Like, more or less, if I were to store all this, I could store all this in one of, the, in one of my plastic drawers or whatever, but the problem is it takes up all that space. Um, let me show you, for example. For example, I have all these plastic drawers here, very similar to the little black ones that we uh, talked about earlier. These ones are also stackable. You can also take them apart. Uh, obviously, they're much larger, but more or less, um, for a while, I was storing all the dowels and stuff in those, but it takes up so much drawer space, it's just not worth it. Like I said, storing them like this not only gives you easy access, but it also decreases the amount of desk space you're taking up, which is absolutely valuable, especially if you're working in a small space, which most of us are. So there it is guys, I hope that was helpful. Those are just a few uh, storage solutions I've found that cost next to nothing to do and it makes a massive difference in your workspace. Uh, like I say, over the next little while I'm going to be tackling a lot of organizational problems in my own life. So I hope that I will be able to share all of them with you. And I thank so much for watching guys. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to our patrons. You are absolutely amazing people and we love you so much. So if you want to help support us here at Encounter Wargaming, you want to help us create more and better video content, please hit the description below. Check out our Patreon campaign. Uh, also, we have a Spreadshirt page, so you can check that out. Buy yourself a t-shirt, just helps us out with a couple of bucks. On top of that, if you like this video, guys, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, so you can check out future video content, and always comment below, because I always answer the comments. I love hearing your comments. I want to hear your storage ideas, and maybe that'll help me out in a little bit. <laughs> so, like I say, if I come up with anything else, I will be sharing it with you guys, and we'll see you at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay. Scratching his head upon a milk crate throne. All right. Watch it, so
Summer